Matt, Valentine's Day is less than three weeks away. Watch out. Yes. Time for my helpful reminder to people, don't get, don't get in a relationship now. Wait until the 14th. When's Valentine's Day? 14th. Wait till the 15th. Wait till the Valentine's candy goes on sale. Yeah, wait for the Valentine's candy to go on sale. Yeah. Okay. And you won't be obligated to uh, dinner and flowers and stuff like that. It's a little tip I got for you. I mean, is that such a big deal to be obligated to? Mm-hmm. Really? Uh, I don't know. It's work. You got to think. And Do so, you think if it's a new relationship that flowers are expected on Valentine's Day? Maybe not. Okay. What do you think? I mean, if you started dating someone right now, I think the most expectation would be like dinner or a date. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you're you're locked into like diamonds and flowers and rose petals. Well, I mean, diamonds, come on. I wasn't going that far, but I know. But still, good to know. Good to know. Yeah, I think I think it's okay to and even a casual like Hey, we're, we just started dating, but do you want to get dinner or? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's okay. Either way, it is a good time to remind people that Valentine's Day is on the way and start thinking, get your brain working on it, right? Yes. Put it on your radar. Yep. So nothing says romance, Matt, mm-hmm. like chicken nuggets shaped in a heart <laughs> for your Valentine's. That's, uh, I think that sounds right to me. That makes sense. Yeah. So especially okay. if you're into a new relationship and you don't want to try to get a Valentine's Day reservation, you can be like, let me cook for you. Oh, that is romantic. And bust out some Tyson chicken hearts. And when I say chicken hearts, Matt, I'm saying that Tyson has made chicken nuggets shaped like hearts. They are not actually fried chicken hearts, though I think there are some people in that market, I not being one of them, and I don't think you. Um, <laughs> Wait, what, what, so what's, what's the deal with these? I'm looking at the photo now. You include this. They're chicken nuggets, but they're shaped like hearts from Tyson, and they're called nuggets of love. <laughs> Bounce, it's a bound. Right? Yeah. Now, uh, in the picture, Matt, there's a, a ramekin of ketchup and a ramekin of mustard. And then there's a plate of chicken nuggets. But then there's also a pin where someone has taken the ketchup and the mustard to make these chicken nugget hearts look like conversation hearts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so Tyson is also giving away these pins so that you can make chicken nugget <laughs> hearts conversation <laughs> hearts. Yeah, it looks like a syringe almost, right? It does, so yeah. So you use this to withdraw the ketchup from the little deal. And then... And then write things like, you're cool, forever yours, BFF, be mine. XOXO. Yeah. Bestie, I heart you are the examples they have here. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So you can go to Tyson's Instagram to intertwine the pin, and you can look for the nuggets of love in your freezer section. Hashtag... Say it with nuggets. Which I don't know if you can get away with that in a lot of situations. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Love nugget sounds a little eh. Yeah. But this definitely sounds like uh, a, a food that you could eat in the bedroom together, right? Eat off each other's body. Oh. Don't you think? I think there might be some crumbs. Yeah. Well, some chicken crumbs. Lick them up. Ugh. Even hotter. Okay. No. Okay, I was going to turn it, like, instead of buying the chicken nuggets of love, I was just going to make the dinosaur chicken nuggets that we have in the freezer conversation dinosaurs <laughs> for my kids. I like that. Yeah, do that. <laughs> uh, and then it went, like, eating nuggets in bed, and I didn't know how to get out of that one. That's fair. That's a tough, <laughs> tough segue. Yeah, so if you don't want to get your... Your Valentine, offer to cook for your Valentine. Offer to cook, yeah. And then throw some nuggets of love in. What do you think is involved in the cooking of this? Just putting it in your oven? Or your air fryer. It says fully cooked breaded shaped chicken patties, so you can probably just microwave them too, right? Oh, Matt, that doesn't say commitment. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. We don't microwave chicken nuggets in our house. I wouldn't either if I were to buy these, to be clear. I was just saying, yeah. maybe one might. Might be something. Maybe if it was a, a solo Valentine dinner. That sounds depressing, yeah. But doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go home and microwave some nuggets of love. And eat them alone and weep. Yeah, something like that. Yeah.
Matt, have you heard of financial infidelity? Okay, and let me guess, that's when you're hiding the things that you're buying from your spouse or significant other? It's basically having secrets about your spending from your spouse. Yeah. Or a partner. No, I have not heard of it, but that sounds like something. Yeah. Would you like me to tell you what the most popular secrets are, or do you want to try to guess them? Because you did just say hiding money, and that's one of them. The listener likes guessing games, so uh, let's do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think are some of the secrets, financial secrets, that partners hide from each other? Oh, so this is kind of like family feud. Dun, 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 mm-hmm. dun, dun, dun. No? Mm-hmm. Survey yeah. says? Well, no, I have, I have another, I have a game tied to this. Oh. I thought you were I'm, expecting I'm me to name I'm leading into it. I can tell, no, I can tell you the financial secrets. Or you can guess them, and then you can play the game with me. Oh. Because it's kind of like two games in one. Oh, two games or, in one. Two games in one. Do you want me to just tell you, and then you just play the one game that I've got prepared? Well, okay, so we know so far financial infidelity is, or the example I used was hiding your spending from your significant other. Mm-hmm. And then you're saying there's additional ones of those? Yes. Okay. So like you said, Family Feud, just throw something at the wall and see if it sticks. Ew, gosh. Um... Spending money on someone not your significant other? Ooh, that's a good one, but not on the list. No. Man, I can't think of what else. It seems like hiding expenses in general from your significant other would cover everything, so maybe I can't follow. Maybe you should go ahead and give me. So, like, spending more than your partner is okay with. That's a secret that spouses try to keep from each other, financial infidelity. Having secret debt, that's financial infidelity. Right. Having a secret credit card. Yikes. Having a secret checking account or savings account. Those are the top forms of financial infidelity. Yeah, I could see getting in trouble with your significant other over all those. Yeah. Bad news bears. Which brings me to celebrity spending. And I'm going to tell you who the celebrity is. And I'm going to give you some options. And you're going to tell me what did they purchase Out of these outrageous options. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Beyonce. Did Beyonce, Queen Bee, did she spend $25,000 on gold-plated eyelashes? Did she spend $100,000 on gold leggings? Or did she spend $250,000 on a golden dog bowl? I'm going to go with the eyelashes. Eyelashes? What's making you say eyelashes? Uh, because she could justify that kind of expense for work? For, for work. Right. I don't see her as the type that would get a golden dog bowl. That seems excessive. Right. Unless she right. could use it in a music video, which I don't, don't really see. So and basically, then, Beyonce's only spending this kind of loot if she can write it off? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I'll go okay. with that. Well, the answer was gold leggings. Damn it. $100,000 on gold wow. leggings. Yeah, see, that was the other thing. I thought the eyelashes would be more attainable than leggings. Gold leggings. Mm. Gold thread, I guess, in there. Yeah, I mean, okay. I like that you think that she's, you know, oh, this is a write-off. <laughs> yeah, it probably was, right? Beyonce needs her tax write-offs. You think she just wears those around the house? Gold leggings? I mean, if I spent that much on gold leggings, I, no, I would never. <laughs> no? No. Okay. Okay. But I would have put the golden dog bowl for this next celebrity, but it's not an option. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga spent $10,000 on a ceramic vase. She spent... $50,000 on anti-ghost protector or $500,000 on a golden bathtub. Oh, dear. Um, mm-hmm. Right. That's tough. I'll go with the ceramic vase. Ceramic vase. $10,000 yeah. for a ceramic vase. Oh, it's just chump change. She actually spent the money on an anti-ghost protector. Damn it. <laughs> Doesn't that just sound made up, though? It does. See, my rationale on this one is like a ceramic vase that costs $10,000. I thought, okay, this could be a rare thing that Lady Gaga secured. Because typically you wouldn't Mm -hmm. think a ceramic vase would cost that much money. And then, yeah, the ghost protector seemed a little bit too out there. And 
almost obvious and not an obvious way. I would like to know what's what's in what's what's anti ghost protector. Is it a spray? Is it a <laughs> Right. Service that they come to your house is it? Uh, yeah, something you plug into the wall like it's a humidifier, right? Or you have to get into like a hot tub so you're cleansed into the anti ghost protector. I don't know. I mean, your golden bathtub could be incorporated right? into that potentially. But all right, so so far we have Beyonce bought golden leggings. We have mm-hmm. Lady Gaga. Who bought a ghost protector or ghost protector, some kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Justin Bieber, our final top spender. Okay. Okay. Hey, big spender. Did Justin Bieber <laughs> spend five thousand dollars on a gold grill? And by grill, I'm talking about in his mouth grill. Mm-hmm. Okay. How much? Not a Traeger. How much money? Uh, five thousand dollars. Five thousand. Okay. $20,000 on a platinum Halloween mask or $40,000 on a diamond and gold money clip. Ooh, this is tough. Uh, I was 10,000 bucks seems cheap for it was 10,000 for his grill or 5,000. Well, 5, 5, 5,000. It seems too cheap. I feel like you're right. I feel like that sounds way too like attainable for us. Normal folk. Because I feel like I saw his grill once upon a time. I don't think it's a permanently installed grill. I th- thought I saw it and it looked like definitely, I mean. A uh, retainer? Yeah, a yeah a grill retainer. Okay. But, uh, okay, I'll go with, no, I can't. That's too cheap. All right, what were the other options again? <laughs> $20,000 on a platinum Halloween mask, which sounds like it'd be really heavy, right? Yeah. $40,000 on a diamond and gold money clip. All right, I'll go with the diamond and gold money clip. That would have been my answer. But. And we would have been wrong. Mm. It was the grill. Seriously? Yeah. 5000 Yeah. Hmm. Which, to you and I, Cut is a rate. lot of money. But when we think about spending Bieber's money, we're like, that's not that much. Must have cubic zirconia in there or something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he had a, a group on with the dentist. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want. <laughs> All right. So uh, I was one for three on here's the items that celebrities spent too much money on. You were 0 for three. Which is all relative. I was 0 for three. That's right. Yeah. Leggings, <laughs> anti-ghost protector, and a gold grill. Not to rub it in, but. Right. So leggings were Beyonce's. Gaga's was the ghost protector, which we don't know what that means. And then Justin Bieber with the grill, a.k.a. the fancy jeweled up teeth. Bedazzled snagglers. Uh, are you into that look at all? The grill look? No. Mm. That just makes me think, like, how do you eat with that? Do you have to use yeah. a special toothpaste? Is it uncomfortable? Yeah, I think you need a person. You just need to have an on-site dental hygienist. Right? <laughs> yeah. Or jeweler or both. I don't know. I like the idea of the retainer style where you can just like pop it out and like, oh, put it in my napkin while I'm eating. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Gross. Kate, do you want to go to Mars? Not a bit. Do you? Uh, if I was guaranteed not to die and I could come back, which <laughs> seems like that's not a, not a thing. It might not be a thing in our lifetime. But the issue, they say... Uh, you're going to get anemia if you go to Mars. Well, I already have it, so can't go. Darn it. Oh. Man. A primary effect of going to space. As long as you're in space, you are destroying more blood cells than you're making. Mm, shoot. So, I mean, do they say if you go to Mars, you should be prepared to eat raw meat and all that stuff? Is that the cure? Yeah, because you're low on iron. Oh. Yeah. Yes. It says here, even space tourists lining up for short trips might have to stay home if they're at risk for anemia or red blood cell deficiency. Hmm. Yeah. 15-day ailments. Space anemia. I mean, even if, like, Mars was attainable, like Hawaii. Like, it's just a long flight, but you're going to get there safe and sound. (laughs) Uh I still don't have, like, this, oh, yeah, let's go to Mars. I think I'd rather say I'd go to the moon. Yeah. But I don't want to go to Mars. That's more convenient. Yeah. 
Maybe Mars to me is just like Death Valley. I don't know. Okay, so they are saying not in our lifetime, but eventually they're going to get to Mars. Oh, What's the I, point of going to Mars? It depends. I mean, you can talk to <laughs> Elon Musk. I think he's pretty determined to get there. <laughs> Did you just say if you can talk to Elon Musk? I said you could. Okay, I was going to say because that might be a struggle because I don't think he's very socially. <laughs> like if you could have a conversation with Elon Musk. Oh, so it's like, well, I could talk to him. However, if I could. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, no. If a person could have a conversation. With Elon Musk, you don't think one could pull that off? I'm. It's not the part where you couldn't pull off having the, com- like, getting to the conversation. But will it be a conversation? He's just, he's a little, he's, he's a little different. Mm-hmm. I don't think that Elon Musk and I would have a very clear conversation. I think it'd be more of an Elon Musk monologue at you. Maybe, or like. Maybe my side of the conversation would be too simplistic for him. <laughs> uh, Kate, too much of a simpleton, huh? Exactly. Like, yeah. I don't have time for women like this. You don't think Get you, out of here. You don't think you could talk to him about rockets and uh, electric car batteries and things like that? Hey, why don't we have the Jetsons yet, buddy? <laughs> That's about as far as you could get. Yeah. You'd probably have an answer. Probably an answer for that. Yeah, but I no, I, I'm, I have no desire to live on Mars. I think the idea of Visiting another planet sounds fun, but so far it seems like most people say, oh yeah, if you're going to Mars, have fun staying there forever. Yeah, I mean, like, what do you do when you're there? Uh, Plant potato. I saw that. Did you see Martian, Matt Damon? No. Plant potatoes. Okay. Mm. Okay. Use feces as fertilizer and plant potatoes. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So far, I'm not sounding like that's a real good vacation. Um... I think the majority of the film is, here's how you stay alive on Mars. And I don't know if it's actually okay. really a step-by-step instruction guide. If you go to Mars, I don't think you can just take that film and be okay, basically. That is not your, what is it, manual. <laughs> right, not an instruction manual. Good film, though. Good one? Yeah. Okay. I mean, Matt Damon, right? I'm up for movies about planting potatoes and uh, using feces for soil sounds like a real good flick there's other things that happen but okay okay that's the only one i recall (laughs) okay okay (laughs) it had a profound effect on me have you been hearing anybody singing the encanto soundtrack no Mm -mm. no i don't think i've heard any of the soundtrack yet oh it's kind of like the new frozen matt i don't know how you're escaping it but you're hearing the soundtrack everywhere all the time Mostly my children, I but say. everywhere I go. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And I have not seen the movie because I know I'm going to cry. Oh, you told me about this. The Disney Pixar. Come on. I know I'm going to cry, Matt. I know it's it. It's good. It feels nice. No, it, I don't like it. You don't like crying during movies? No. Never? I try to avoid it if possible. Doesn't mean you're avoiding a lot of really good films? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You don't like, why, why? What's the issue? Does it make you sad? Well, yeah. Long term? Beyond the film? Yeah. Typically, there's some kind of resolution, right, that makes you feel better about the state of things? Mm, I just prefer not to go down that road. Okay. Yeah. Especially with, like, cartoons. Like, Pixar, like, when you pull at the heartstrings, you know you're going to love the flick, but you're like, oh, I'm going to cry. I know you're going to get me, Pixar. And there are some flicks that I'll, I'll risk that, like any of the Toy Story films. I'll risk the tears for Toy Story. But there's something about Yeah, I don't want to watch it because I don't want to cry. And my girls are like, Mom, you're going to love it. But I know all the words to the songs. They already watch it without you. Yeah, I told them to. How? How? They watch it in like the living room and you plug your ears in the basement or something or what? I just was somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. May have been running. May have been in the kitchen. May have been. Gotcha. Yeah. Did they cry? No. And I asked, am I going to cry? And they're like, what? Well, and I'm like, "Uh uh-huh, I know it. I'm going to cry. You don't have the ice in your veins like your children do? Uh, no, they they don't have the life experiences. Oh. The things that okay. make me cry are usually like, oh, God. And they're like, oh, that's a sweet thing. But all the music is from Lin-Manuel Miranda. That's right, right. So it's super catchy. It's super well-written. It's fantastic. I just don't know what happens in the movie. But Matt, we don't talk about Bruno. That's the name of a song from it, right? 
It is. It's the okay. new Let It Go, though. It is the song that everyone is singing like everyone was singing Let It Go from Frozen. And how's that treating you? Well, it's stuck in my head constantly, but it's, it's easy to dance in your kitchen while you're singing it. Got a little Latin flavor to it. The kids call it up? Oh, yeah. All the time. Can you recall the most annoying song that your kids expose you to? Of mm. all time? Were they into Baby Shark? Yes, Baby Shark. Baby Shark uh-huh. is awful. But see, Baby Shark used <laughs> to be an old camp song. So we'd sing Baby Shark. I was singing Baby Shark in my 20s when I didn't have children, and it didn't bother me as much because I was getting paid. Oh. And then as a parent, I'm like, what? Turn it off. <laughs> You're like, where's my money? Right? Pay me to listen to this garbage. I did not know that song was that old. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yep. And you do it with a little finger, and then you do the hand, and then you do the chomper, and then you do the grandma. Mah, 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 mah. Like she has no teeth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've done a pretty good job. I mean, by virtue of being childless and alone, I've done a good job uh, avoiding that song. I think I've only heard it like three total times. I think it also helps that the children you are around, your nephews, are a little bit older. They're out of the baby shark, what is it, window? Out of the baby shark window. Yeah, that's fair. (laughs) I like that. Uh, Yeah, baby shark probably the one I'm like, I'm going to pierce my eardrums now. No, this is terrible. Baby shark is? Yes. Because that's far and away the worst, right? I think so. Because I can pretty much get down with all the Disney songs. I don't know. You know, what do they say? Like the some of the prisons in other countries, <laughs> like they play a song over and over. Or... I've heard of that. I've heard of that also in like in war, like on the battlefield, too. Maybe they'll blast. I think I remember hearing something about Metallica being blasted loudly at somebody. I was just going to ask you. Yeah. Like maybe in the Middle East, they played Metallica on repeat or something. Yeah, I think something like that. Yeah. But if I was in like a prison and they're like, guess what? We're going to play The Little Mermaid all day, every day. And I'd be like, I know all the words. Let's do this. But. Baby Shark, though. Yeah. Then I'd have to be like, hey, when's execution day? Come on. (laughs) Fantastic. (laughs) Too far? Too dramatic? No, that's just far enough. That's (laughs) okay. It's just what I needed, at least. (laughs) Okay. All right, so how are you going, Kate? How do you want to be executed? Do you know? Have you thought Ooh. about this before? Gas. You want to be gassed to death? Okay. I, like, if you were going to get, uh, like, when, um, like, right before you go to surgery. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anesthesia? Yes, thank you. That big word. And you count backwards, and then you're in Narnar. <laughs> In Narnar by seven. Yes, that's not where it takes over your body and you get a shot and you start choking and having a seizure. Not that kind. No, nope, <laughs> just the kind where it just like, go to sleep. Night, night. Electric chair doesn't sound comfortable. No. Drowning doesn't sound good. Drowning. I don't know if that's the way they put people to death. Waterboarding. Not on purpose. Well, they're not trying. Did they actually kill somebody with waterboarding? I think it's happened before. I watch movies, okay. Matt. You watch movies? Okay. <laughs> wow, how am I to question that? Firing Squad? No, thank you. Okay, that was the one I was most curious about. No Firing Squad? No. Gosh, the anticipation. Ugh, I was watching a movie not too long ago where a guy was supposed to die by Firing Squad. And like, he was like second coming up next. It was going to be his turn. And then there was a big like order, like nobody after that. And I was like, gosh, can you imagine being the guy before him? Be like, what the hell? I get shot, but they don't have to. They didn't get shot. Why didn't they get, deserve to get shot? They ran out of ammo? No, it was like some government, something got passed. So they were like, no more firing uh, squads. They're just going to go to life sentence in a prison. Just. Yeah. But it made for good suspense in the movie. So it was like, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I think you're right. Gas me to death. Probably what I would prefer. I've often felt, though, it's like a more honest punishment when you do a firing squad, though. Well, are you talking about if somebody deserves the execution? Yeah. Okay. 
Not just like caught behind enemy lines and we're just bad people, so we're going to kill all of our prisoners. No, they've been they've been given the death penalty. Okay, okay. By a jury of their peers. Okay. Of which I'm still on the fence about, but... Mm. On the death penalty? Yeah. Well, we don't want to get too deep into that on this show, but... I, I know, that's why I was like, ugh. But I just think it'd be more honest to do a firing squad. I said, oh, look, he's going nar-nar. Yeah. You know? I don't know. I just feel like maybe we're trying to sanitize it for ourselves. I think the the psychological torture of any kind of execution is kind of probably part of the punishment too, right? Because you have to worry about the day that you're going to be dead. Yeah. Yeah. And it's happening. It's happening. And people are watching. And do I feel sorry for what I did? And what's after this? And... What if they break the needle in my arm? Oh, my God. Do we have to reschedule it? <laughs> this is the kind of uplifting content that our listeners come to. Goodness gracious. <laughs> On Matt we went, and Kate. We went from nuggets of love to execution. Hey. And I was just talking about listening to Little Mermaid. Circle of life. On repeat. <laughs> Circle of life. <laughs> and I know that's Lion King. <laughs> that is. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Oh, my God. Hakuna Matata, baby. Hakuna Matata. It means no worries. Oh, thanks. I was curious. Like, wait, does that, what does that mean again? For the rest of your days. It's nice they put that in song form so you remember what it meant. It's our problem-free philosophy. Philosophy, yeah. Hakuna Matata. Haku. I like it. The end. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. It's yeah. a good film. All right, way to rescue this segment. That's Thank great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Talk about a cartoon that makes you ball your eyes out. Lion King. I don't watch it anymore. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It's like, oh, how can how are they eating worms? <laughs> Start weeping. <laughs> Th- that's not the part, but okay. Oh, okay. We played Machine Gun Kelly on our radio that's station. Right, 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 right. Uh, my ex's best friend. Yeah, just drawing a, drawing a blank there. Yeah. You know, he just recently got engaged. Megan Fox, right? Yeah, you had shared the story that, was this right, that this is the couple that drank each other's blood, or at least she yeah. claimed that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. The couple that drinks each other's blood stays together. No. Uh, I think that's what they say. He uh, and he did an interview with Vogue saying that her ring is unique. It's custom designed. He's It's one side is a diamond, and the other side is an emerald. And if you were to put the two sides together, it's a heart. But also... What you can't see in the pictures are the bands are actually thorns. Uh, yeah. Ouch. So if she tries to take off her bands, they're thorns. It's going to hurt. Are they designed in such a way you can put it on and it doesn't hurt, I guess? I, that part I don't know, but his quote in Vogue mm. is, so if she tries to take it off, it hurts. Love is pain. Man, he's got a matching one or no? No, of course not. Why would a dude have something with thorns on it? No, this is just for my lady. Gross. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, hmm. Megan Fox. If yeah, she, what's she doing? I mean, can you, Matt, like, like you said, if there's no thorns when you put it on, but if you try to take it off, then it's thorns. Be like, oh, wait, I just, I just need to get it sized, though. And now it's, okay, never mind. It's just going to stay on because I don't want thorns to take off my finger. If you were Megan Fox, would you be with Machine Gun Kelly? Not no, but hail no. And that's well before you found out that they're, that she's wearing a engagement ring made of thorns? Yeah. And the drinking each other's blood thing to prove their love? Correct. Doesn't that kind of sound yeah. manipulative, though? Here's this giant ring. Diamonds. OBT dubs. It's got thorns on it, baby. <laughs> Gross. He dubs. <laughs> Did you know that uh, George Kelly Barnes, better known by his pseudonym Machine Gun Kelly, was an American gangster from Memphis, Tennessee, active during the Prohibition era, Kate? I feel like who doesn't know that, right? Right. And check this out, Kate. <laughs> July 18th, 1954, died Leavenworth Penitentiary. LV, what? Did he... That's right. Was he put to death or did he just die in prison? Uh... I don't know, because I was just looking okay. at the initial excerpt. Let's see. Okay. Died. It doesn't have, like, a parenthesis. Okay, death. Spent his 21 remaining years in prison. Yeah, that sounds like a life sentence. 
17 years on Alcatraz as inmate number 117, Kate. Oh, man. And died of a heart attack at Leavenworth. <laughs> That's a tough transition. Alcatraz with all its views to Leavenworth. <laughs> with all of its views. Views. 